brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Ah, uh, it's good to know that we will always be replete with Stampeders songs, thanks to Scott. Wheeler and Lecter with you on your Thursday morning. Welcome to Mornings at the Cabin. I took a morning off, uh, not because I deserved it, but because I wanted to throw a wrench into everyone else's plans. That's it. We, we powered on. You soldiered on without me. You had a great show. Did all right. Yeah. Did all right. Uh, how was your Wednesday morning? I was... I, I, well, the, here's the thing about the, the, the taking that morning, taking the morning off uh, from the show and then still going to work. I get about an extra 45 minutes of sleep. It's really not that much. No, I, I think it's the same for any of us. When yeah. we actually like play that card and take the morning off, you get like an extra half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. And then carry on doing what you would have done anyway. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's nice. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not that much. Yeah. You, you, know? you, you, still, you still wake up and, and rant uh, into thin air. It's just slightly, slightly fewer people here. I wake up. I wake up. I wake up ranting. Like I'll just be, uh, 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 vaccines. Uh, uh, stop doing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot to say about vaccines, I feel like, these uh, days. Measles outbreak. Yeah. Officially an outbreak in Anuvik. Two people. An outbreak. Two cases. Two, two, two makes an outbreak. Uh, well, I mean. There's an outbreak of radio hosts this morning. <laughs> that's right. One. There are There are two of us. And we are spreading... Uh, uh, because no one wants to protect themselves from us. Honestly, in ten minutes, I feel like there'll be three people in here. I, I think so. You know what? We 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 are communicable this morning. Contagious. Contagious. Mm. Liprosine? No. Um, I was just throwing a word out there. I think you know. Leprosy. Leprosy. That's Lip- right. Uh, hopefully, all limbs will remain hey, attached throughout the show. Hey, you never know. You never know. Other other diseases are making a comeback. Let's get leprosy back on the board. It's time for a little vintage disease time. Shouldn't be all measles all the time. That's right. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Mornings at the Cabin, Wheeler and Ollie with you. Still no, Scott. We have not spread to three people just yet. We are two very, very sick men within the Studio One. The, the outbreak of radio hosts has been contained for now, but we well, can only hold it for so long. That's right. There is one in isolation in the other studio, and we are hoping he does not spread to the rest of us. Um, Ollie, you were at the uh, Explorer Grand Opening, mm-hmm. the Grand Re-Reopening, because I'm sure they opened the first time. When they opened the first time, many, many years ago, they had a Grand Opening, and then when they expanded, they had another Grand Opening, and now they've had another Grand Opening. They expanded again. Yes. How many more rooms did they put in there? Uh, 70-something, I think. 71 oh, more rooms. Jumping. Uh, and the eighth floor now has... I had a little tour last night. Yes. The, the Aurora Suite. Ooh. And this is room 888. Oh. Lucky number in Asia. Yes. And so it has a telescope in it. Wow. Massive telescope just in the like the living room area of the suite pointed at the stars. But that's so cool. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, How much per night? And a deck. I don't actually know per <laughs> night, but a lot. A lot. <laughs> and a deck. Oh, and there's, a, there's a deck up there, like an eighth floor deck yeah. that you can get out on. You know the lights that they put mm-hmm. on the top of it. You're like right below one of those things. I feel like that would keep you up. Um, I don't know. I, I from from inside, it was hard to tell because it was still pretty much daylight at the time. Yeah, uh, it didn't seem too like the way the lights are installed out there because like way easier to see how they're installed when you're right next to it on the eighth yes. floor. Uh, looks like you probably don't really see too much of that from inside the room. And then like there's a king size bed with like furs all over it. And furs. Then, uh, a, wow, it's a fancy old suite, that's for sure. I love it. And uh, and one of our very good friends from the uh, CIBC Mud Run mm-hmm. won uh, a weekend in the Aurora Suite oh, at uh, draw nice. last night. Very nice, which is very cool. Yeah, they had a great big, uh, great big opening ceremony. And uh, just to yeah, as you say, uh, this is not the first time. No, the Explorers had an opening. Uh, I'll tell you one thing: Premier Bob McLeod on his A game last night mm. uh, doing the speech. Now I. I don't think I would be alone in saying that the premier speeches are not renowned for their quick deadpan humor uh, and, and one-liners. Yes. Uh, he, he, he knocked it out of the park last night. He had a gag about the lack of parking, uh, which, <laughs> yes. which was beautifully done. Yeah, yeah. Like, here we all are gathered to celebrate being able to park at the hotel again. And yeah. <laughs> no kidding. It's exactly what yeah, I thought yeah, driving up there. Yeah. The number of times you try to go to that hotel over the last year or so. Yeah. I've just been like, well, this is pointless. I'll just park somewhere else in your uh, life and walk. Just walk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but everything looks everything looks great. Did you get tours of some of the like the, the less Aurora rooms? Uh I got shown into a couple of the other ones. Like so standard had, room. So Angela Zowski, uh friend of Cabin Radio, mm. photographer extraordinaire, was was along for the ride taking photos of us having the tour. Of course. For them. Yeah. Uh and she's of she's got a pretty big contract with the Explorer to yep. do all her photography and stuff mm-hmm. uh, for them. And as we as we were being shown through all the rooms, I I, I was 
leaned over to her and I said, these are all your photographs on the walls, aren't they? <laughs> she was like, yes, yes, yes they, they are. are. <laughs> yeah. so that's, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. So her, cool. her photos are on all the walls. And yeah, the new, the new rooms look, look pretty sharp. I had actually never been in a hotel room at the Explorer till last night. Because why would I? I? You know what? I don't. Now, now that you say that, I don't think I ever have either. Ever. Because there's no reason to. No, there's no reason to. I would never, I've no. never had to stay at a hotel in, in Yelma. Been, been to the Explorer for yeah. things like hundreds of times. Yep. But I actually, we got in the elevator and I suddenly realized I've never been off the ground floor oh, yeah. in the Explorer Hotel. I've spent I've a, only yeah. ever gone. I've spent a ton room. of time. Yeah, in conference rooms in, yeah. in the Explorer, but never, yeah, never in a room. Ha, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, so there you go. finally, I know what it looks like to actually stay at that hotel. <laughs> well, I'm going to book the Aurora room. You, you go for it. And you let me know how that goes. How much, how much and don't is. ask Cabin Radio to pay for it. Well, no, it'll be it'll be a work trip for sure. Um, I did want to just to divert completely away from this, but uh, still staying on topic. Um, the lights. Yeah. Now, I yes. I like them. I like them. A lot of people seem to not like them. A lot of people, kind of in our circle that have been in this town for a while, I have straight up said that they they hate them, and and they wish they would go away. So garish is a word i've heard used garish yes okay fair enough because I, I feel like the ones what they're trying to emulate is is the the museum's lights and those are a little less uh, garish i suppose but i mean i, I don't know. spoke to so ed romanowski is yeah. uh one of the big wigs at the nuna star which is the group that yes. owns the explorer and i interviewed him last night this will be on our website later on today i did slip in a question about the lights yeah. like so hey tell us tell us more about these lights uh just to get her to confirm that they were going for a northern lighty look. Yeah. Which which absolutely they were. Yes. Uh I would still contend that orange should come out of the color scheme. Therefore. I suppose. Uh but they what they've done more recently is they've just switched it to green. Uh-huh. And they've just been using the green. Okay. And you know what? That looks good. Yeah. I'm I'm down with that. I, I thought when they had it like rotating between like blue, purple, orange, red, green, like all the colours of the rainbow, I was like, oh, okay. We're looking at a little Vegasy there, kids. I still didn't mind it just because, like, when it is super dark, I still didn't mind it. Like, some people, some people were saying it, it was funny because it was the, the same reason for people liking it as it was for not liking it, which was like, this is the first thing people see when they come into town. So some people were like, yeah, and it looks great. And other people were like, this is the first thing people see when they come into town. And I'm like, I, I kind of feel like it's it's better than. Like the logo is so brilliant. I love the Explorer logo. Always have the canoe. Um, but like the lights up top make it just kind of make it pop a little bit more. And maybe I guess I'm in maybe the vocal minority that actually likes it. And because I mean, other than that, the Explorer, great hotel, wonderful place. It's been in Yellowknife for a long time. Is a rectangle. I'll tell you what, a you cream could, colored rectangle. You could see those lights from anywhere yeah in town absolutely i have yet to be like at anyone's house where you can't like catch a glimpse of yeah. the explorer's lights and you know what? i think over time i think i'm a- people may come to like that well i hope so want the meat and potatoes of the morning show with none of the filler you got it with the mornings at the cabin podcast that's a strange breakfast though ollie you had some news that you didn't want to share off air so i have no idea how to segue into it indian restaurant yes so <laughs> You're so good at doing that. I am wonderful at it, but you got to give me info so then I can segue. I can make a pun <laughs> or compare it to another Indian restaurant that we have in town. I got, uh, a, I got a phone call yesterday. Yes. About five o'clock. In the morning? In the afternoon. Oh. And it was, I answered the phone and, and the woman on the other end of the line, it was a BC number. The woman on the other end of the line said, is that very uncertainly said, is that cabin radio? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and And she followed that with, are you a, are you a restaurant? Yes, <laughs> yes, we are. We're also a gift shop at the airport. We we have leftover cake. So, <laughs> lots I, and lots I of cake. Sort of, I tried to remain as polite as possible. I said, "Well, yeah, I I think it's probably very much implied in the name that we're a radio station." <laughs> and, and and she said, "I I I was wondering if you were an Indian restaurant, though." She was quite I insistent. Am. We are. I was yeah. wondering if you were an Indian restaurant. And I had to, yeah, I, I let her down quite gently, and I said, well, "No, I'm sorry. We, we, despite despite appearances, no, uh, we're we're not an Indian restaurant." And she was like, "Oh, okay," and I just hung up, and I never heard her again. <laughs> and and so I, I have no idea where that came from, but I did love the idea that we might have been the world's most stealthy Indian restaurant. <laughs> Absolutely. And we decided, no, oh, we'll call ourselves Cabin Radio. Well, and then nobody will know. I felt like saying, "Oh, Drat, you got you yeah, got me." That's right. You're right. Oh, we thought we were going to get away with it. Had it been for those pesky kids. Yeah. And and yes, we are at Indian restaurant. So did she Would then... you like a pop a dumb? 
Did she then call the rant line? Be like, I don't know why you guys are pretending you're an Indian restaurant when <laughs> you're clearly you? not. You know, uh, clearly. You know, that is not far off the occasional comment we <laughs> get into the Facebook <laughs> inbox. That's right. Uh, so, so yeah. So, we. I would like to make it very clear for anyone listening who has intended stopping by for naan bread, we... We are not an Indian restaurant. <laughs> we are not. We could be if you want us to I be. suppose. I we would love s- to have some naan bread. Yeah, yeah I would love some Randomly. Yeah. Yeah, it would, would be fun to set up a GoFundMe and to see how much money we can raise to set up an Indian <laughs> restaurant at Cabin Radio. I feel like if we just buy it from elsewhere and then just put it here. Don't in, tell in them that. Don't tell them that. Would you, obviously, we'll just get... Uh, what's the name of the food truck? Uh, oh, uh, Sapphire. Sa- yeah, Saffron. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We get there in Good Indian. Lord. Saffron. Uh, we'll just get Saffron in because I... That's I, right. Yeah. Butter chicken will do very That's nicely so for me. Yeah. Yes. Um, they, the fact that they spent all of last summer parked outside our mm. office was a fantastic thing. So here's hoping for this year's food truck draw because we would like that back again. Um, yeah. But we're not an Indian restaurant. And I just wanted to make that clear on the air, seeing as there appears to be some confusion and I don't know how. <laughs> You're really letting a lot of people down. Um, and I'm not sure what I signed up for. I'm, all, I'm disillusioned at this point. <laughs> Because we've already had a stealthy Indian restaurant. Um, Welcome to the Cabin Radio Bismarty Hour. <laughs> uh, that's all I got. That's it. Yeah. Well, call in with uh, any of your other queries, 867-675-0100. Are you guys, uh, are you guys a space station? Yes. Are you guys <laughs> a, 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 a daycare service? Yes. Can we, can we play Indian food related? Can we play like Korma Chameleon? Uh, is there anything else that we can put on the air? Just no. what I thought we were going to get out of this with a Vindaloo. Puns. Vindaloo is an actual song by I people know. who did something. I but, know it is. Put that on. I don't have that. I got to say, I really thought that the start of the break was heading to somewhere. That, that being a new Indian restaurant somewhere else. So did I. Not us. Absolutely. Not the <laughs> no, fact that we are fact. We are it. We are we the are, new okay. Indian restaurant. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Come on down. That's we the twist. will be open all day long. Will we have food? No, we will not. <laughs> Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. What's the deal with comedy? That's as far as it gets for me. Mornings at the Cabin, Wheeler, Ollie Lecter with you on your Thursday morning. Last night was comedy night at the castle. It has become a staple of the of the Snow King Winter Festival. And uh, our own Lecter was there last night doing a little snooping around. Laughing it up. Oh, uh, laughing it up. Laugh it up, fuzzball. And uh, forgetting how quickly you become a block of ice when yeah, you're sitting cold. there for, yeah, a I saw hours. pictures of Howie there. He had his coat on and gloves. And he was freezing. I bet. Yeah. There was a heater right behind him, and he was still complaining about the cold. Well. And it was a mild night last night. It was mild. Yeah, yeah. How was it? It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. All the comedians uh, did really well. A uh, couple first timers. Nice. Up there that uh, that did. Yeah. Incredibly well. Uh, I want to give a, t- a shout out to Megan Housley. Yeah. Who? Yeah. She was one of those first timers and rocked it. Well done, Megan. Very nice. Uh, Uncle Lauren, of course. Talked about his vasectomy the whole time. Yeah. Entire set. His snippy his snips. Vasectomy. Ten minutes on his snippy snips. Uh, about, you know, I'm not sure how long his set was exactly, but uh, but it was well well time, well played out, and oh, uh, so probably about ten minutes, yeah, maybe a little bit more, but uh, yeah, whole set regaling us with the tale of his vasectomy, very which nice. was very very entertaining. Um, and Howie Miller, of course, headlining. He was fantastic. Of course, he's a pro. He's been around for a long time. He's been doing this for you know right. twenty plus years. And he's got a show on APTN. The one thing that stood out to me, he did. A Homer Simpson impression. Wow. That was bang on. Nice. I've always said I've never found, I've never met anyone who can do, who would even attempt to do a Homer Simpson impression, because no one can do it even close. Never seen anyone who can do one. He, uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly what the bit was, but yeah, basically did a, did a Homer Simpson impression, and it was it was spot on. Nice. Yeah, it was so good. So it sounds like we all missed out. Well, if you saying? weren't there, yeah. Oh, okay. Lots of people didn't. You, you two in particular, we didn't. Uh, you, you missed no, out. Yeah, no, we went. To, I went. To I Although you were both at a, a oh, different events, I was snacking on canapes at the oh, hotels Ooh. grand opening and in the Aurora Suites. In the Aurora first. Suites. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> oh, oh. We got furs all over that bed. Pinky in the air. Pink. Oh, all right. <laughs> Easy. Uh, Fancy. We were oh, I see. Earlier, the, the... Oh, sorry. What do you think of it? <laughs> I don't know. where you are going to stick that pinky. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it sounds like an awesome night, and it always is, yeah. right? I mean, especially when you have first timers up there, because you're kind of right there with them. It's not like you're not going there to be like, "Oh God, this guy's terrible." Yeah, you can really tell it's his first time. It's like this guy's its first time. Like let's let's be there with that person. Yeah, they're stepping out onto the edge of what is 
uh, arguably the hardest thing to do in performance. Oh, man. I think it's the hardest thing to do in performance. Because, like, even if you were doing some kind of crazy interpretive dance performance art, at least you could just be like, well, I guess you didn't get it. Yeah. But with jokes, it's like no one laughed. It's not because they didn't get it. Yeah. It's because it wasn't funny. I have so much respect for people who go up and do stand-up comedy for the first time. I've been a fan of comedy for as long <laughs> as I can remember. Do you but also I've like never, music? <laughs> no, can't stand this I stuff. I was going to say. Um, but I've never, I've never summed up the courage to go it's to tough, an open man. night, an open mic night, and it's, do it. It's an, it's enormous amounts of, uh, of of guts, or or complete just like ignorance as well. Well, like, you, you, you just well, completely yeah. ignore the crowd. You know that like, could make whatever. it easier, really. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but putting yourself out there, especially you know when it's, I, I I can't really get a sense of if it would be easier if there was a crowd where you didn't know anyone and you weren't you know possibly going to disappoint someone you knew or have them look at you differently because <laughs> wow that's really deep that's like that's yeah that's hurtful oh i overthink all oh, of yeah, these yeah. things no i think it would be easier like to have someone there that was just like hey you were great you were great because i mean every once in a while especially when you're performing you need friends to lie to you you know <laughs> I, i've i know i've been in terrible shows and done terrible jobs and, and that and then just having people be like it was great you were great and yeah. i'm just like you're lying but thank you um <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a lot of pressure. I think yeah. it would be. I think that's crowd. That crowd's probably the best crowd to do a first time at. Absolutely, yeah. and, and especially for for a one off, you know, once a year event. It, it's it, it's nice that there is that environment. And I mean, they said it right off the top of the show. Um, you know, this is not a play. Like, please no heckling. That was yeah. one of the things they said. And it's like, yeah, fair. Oh, enough. you would we don't... never get away with that in that room. No, never. You would not ever. They people would be like, get the hell out of here. Well, and because in in most cities most capital cities especially you have an amateur stand-up night somewhere yeah at some oh, local there's club yeah, there's yeah. an open mic night and people go up and you know they'll do a couple minutes five minutes and it's just stuff that they're kind of that they've kind of written down and yeah. are working on and uh you know are putting together seeing what makes people laugh and what doesn't we don't we don't have that here this no. is the one night where it's like anything you've written you, you this is your chance to present it and if it doesn't go over well, then it doesn't go over well. <laughs> so it is nice that there is a a very close support group of people here who are like, hey, we want to have fun and we're not here to ruin your night. That's just right. Just because you happen to tell a joke that, you know, maybe didn't land so well. Yeah. And I mean, and, and as always, uh, if you are nervous in front of a group of people, just picture them in their underwear. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And in the snow castle, pitching them, picture them freezing to death. Cabin Radio's morning show podcast. All the best chat, none of the embarrassing mistakes. We got a giveaway for you guys. This is just something that uh, I was not a party to and I did not approve, but they did it without my permission. And that's fine. That's fine. We're here to give away some stuff for our one year anniversary. Ollie? We are giving away. Took, yes. cap, shirt, mm. hoodie, mm. fanny pack, mm. shades, mm -hmm. beach towel. Got to get rid of those fanny packs somehow. <laughs> This is the um, only way we got to do it. I think we do another giveaway next next week where it's like you, you could win 30, 30 fanny packs. <laughs> win a tub o fanny packs. In order, in order to win, just breathe in and then out. <laughs> and then out. Yeah. And then we will. And anyone who's liked our page has a chance to win. <laughs> just drop them off at your doorstep. Oh, and look anyone? at us losing likes. Like. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> only a couple of weeks. Okay, so here um, we go. This is the one of everything giveaway yes. in order to celebrate our birthday. Huge amount of entries. How many entries? Uh, we have in the draw today 148 people. Holy. Holy. 148 people. Like How many people got it right? Them. Got what? Well, they, those are the people. Who those are right. the people that got it right. Yeah. yeah. Were there anybody that didn't get it? Right? There were a few people who did not fully understand the question. Nah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the nature of humanity. Or just uh, didn't want to do the research and the follow yeah. up. No. I believe the host that quit was Dr. Dre. The host that quit? He no longer works for Dr. Dre quit. He no longer works for he's off, uh, to, he's off to sell beats. He rage quit because we were going to play a Jesse Wheeler track. Yeah. <laughs> he's he like, well, uh -uh. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> so if you did not see the contest and are wondering what on earth they're talking about, the what? question was, uh, which artist was responsible for Mr. Wheeler rage quitting out of the studio two hours before we went on air for the very first time a year ago? It was Dr. Dre see, for yeah. reasons that will only be explained if you go listen to the podcast from Tuesday. And I feel, well, I feel like it's unfair to Dr. Dre because I love Dr. Dre. I just didn't want it to be the first song we ever played. You, that's you were an angry man, and that's fine. Dre understands. I was also went, under fine. a lot of pressure. I was very nervous. You went for one of your drives, and it was fine. <laughs> it was. Go for a drive around this city, Ollie. Find out all the little nooks and crannies. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I think an angry drive is a really good idea. So, 148 <laughs> entrants. 
into this contest. Let's start eliminating some of them. The usual way we do this is I have a list numbered 1 to 148. Uh, I will then get these two gentlemen to begin calling out numbers, and we'll just eliminate them from the contest because it's a really cruel and mean way to run a prize. I really feel, I feel like there's another draw that's happening that does this too. Um, okay, how many, one do you, how many do you want to eliminate? Let's uh, let's thirty. Take, let's take three people out of the <laughs> equation. So, uh, so Mr. Wheeler, I'll start with you. Okay, I will pick uh, numbers one through thirty. No, you can't just eliminate. Oh, all okay. of them. we're going to see one <laughs> um, person out of the running here. Out of the running will be forty-nine. Number forty-nine. Ah, that is a uh, Daryl, authentic Daryl from Instagram. Ah, gone. Authentic, authentic Daryl. Authentic Daryl. You couldn't get rid of fake Daryl first. You had to just. Yeah, straight for authentic Daryl. Uh, yeah, I've, straight I've, for I've, authentic Daryl, which is great right. because he, I honestly thought he was the real deal. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is my okay. brother Daryl, my other brother Daryl, and authentic Daryl. Okay, uh, <laughs> That's a Bob Newhart show. Anybody? Like the, nope. like the, let's take out the, let's take out a second member of the crew here. All right, let's get rid of number ninety nine. Ooh, the nines not are getting Wayne Gretzky. I'm Kendra sure. Wombold, I'm so sorry. Oh, Kendra, oh, no. you're leaving the territory anyway. You don't need cabin <laughs> Ken- radio. Kendra, all right. <laughs> Kedder is indeed leaving the territory uh, at the end of this week, I believe, and will not be going with Cabin Radio merchandise. Take that, Kendra. Yeah. All right. Uh, another number, please, Mister Wheeler. We're, uh, we're building up to the to the winner, but it's not going to be winning yet. This is going to be a loser. One, f- two, one, one hundred and twenty-one. That 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 took it. So that's the entire Ragged Rider snowboarding club oh, no. that ends up on, on Instagram. Ah, there yeah. you go. You're eliminating thirty people. Bunch of, like, yeah, one a fell bunch of kids and people were really <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that's. <laughs> Really so, too so bad. well done. No, you've actually. I think they've got something like 150 members. So, oh so, wow! So that's uh, that's quite an impressive, that was a uh, devastating quite, one, a devastating <laughs> rejection. Well, to be fair, they, I mean, how are they all going to enjoy that? That's right. Yeah, right. you know what? If, well, well, everybody gets a week with a fanny pack. <laughs> they put it in the rental pile. You can rent <laughs> the fanny right. pack. Rent the fanny pack. Maybe we should think about doing that. Fanny <laughs> pack rental. I mean, no, rent a pack or tourists. rent a fanny. Yeah, no, rent. that's no, rent a fanny's not good. Mm. Not rent a fanny. No, we'll we'll move on. So, mm. Lecter, it falls to you today to draw the winner okay. of our One of Everything merch giveaway. Okay. The numbers are between 1 and 148. And, thinking, uh, I'll uh, uh, leave it up to you. I'm just going through this thought process. Mm. Just kind of trying to pick a number. I'm trying to mm. guess from his face where he's going to go. And uh, What do you think I'm going to guess? I think you're going to guess like 36. I'm going to go one better. 37. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like them apples? Yeah, 37. 37. Uh, Kim Webb Kamimalik. It's hey, all yours. Congratulations, Kim. You get <laughs> Jesse Wheeler's <laughs> very own commemorative Glenn Miller skiffle. That's right. I will come <laughs> to your door and I'll just do that. Along with uh, our one of everything pack. So, Kim, Web, Kamim Malik, we will be in touch. We will arrange a way to get all of that to you, depending on where you are in the world. We had people enter from all over the place. And congratulations to you. Thank you to everybody who entered. We were overwhelmed uh, by Facebook notifications yesterday of people entering for that contest. Uh, we've got one more birthday contest coming up later on this week. And we'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca.